So what I do is I take a lot of pictures and I'm now I'm just going in reverse. So there's really nothing to plate on the forks. So I just move right onto the case bolts and you can see here in the long threaded rod that uh, the cylinder and the head, I guess you call them studs, the head studs. So I just go in reverse order. I write down all of the different parts that I'm plating and I've figured the, the amps that I need to throw on them. Then I take a picture of each little bag and what's in it. Then it's just a process of cleaning up the nuts and bolts. You can see some are in the acid, getting any and all of the old plating off. And there's a degreaser. And we have one, a batch in here. As you can see, they're getting plated nicely. And, and they're hung out to dry. Plated. Now you're probably wondering why I go to this extent. This is the only uh, part I'm going to focus on on the uh, plating because I've done so many in past videos. So you can look at the plating process and it's a learning curve. So you're going to, you know, the video is going to help, but you just got to get in and do it yourself. So I'm going to do it before. Here is rear wheels. This is what the nuts and bolts look like on these wheels after 30, 40, 50 years and after. You can see why I do plating. So now we'll move on from the plating and the next process is getting everything prepped for paint. Don't those look beautiful? I just have to show you something. I ordered this order from Rocky Mountain on 12-15. And here it is. And it's Christmas early. Look at that. Look at that bag of parts. But the biggest thing is that's the date today. I ordered it yesterday, and I ordered it yesterday, I believe, around 10 o'clock in the, in the morning. And it got here tonight at 5. One day delivery. If I went to the dealer here, they would tell me, first of all, that the price is retail. Second, they would tell me that I've got to wait five to seven business days and probably that it's Christmas and expect two weeks. Rocky Mountain, one day. I'm making a lot of headway on the plating, so this is this stuff's all plated, looking new. So I'm gonna shift gears because VMR Paint, VMR, they have outdone themselves. Dirk over there actually had me and it. Keep in mind, this is Christmas time. He has sent my paint, and it's here. Now, I think he's West Coast. I think he's Oregon. Uh, and I'm Nevada. So, But three days for custom paint, which means I've got to start getting the metal ready and painting. So this is my bead blaster. Uh, I'm going to take this I think there's a little dent right here I'm going to straighten that out and then I'm going to prep these things for paint so getting this ready that ready the headlight bucket and I got one other part that's out front 
or out uh, by the blaster. I'm going to blast that next. And those are clean. And I'll probably just hit them with a little sandpaper here and there. And then a coat of self-etching primer. While I was sandblasting, I went ahead and blasted this, which will give me a little bit better idea of how I'm going to repair those two ears. And as long as I'm sandblasting, I'm going to do these wheels. I've taped off the bearing area. I actually pulled the bearing. And one I'm going to be able to replace, the other I'm going to re uh, or repair. Yeah, one I'm going to be able to use again, this one. I'm going to be able to put right back in. And then I ordered another one for the other side. And then I'm going to do this. And just keep black. We're down in the paint booth. I've got a nice little motorcycle paint booth. And it's not very big. Not something you can paint a car in, but you can bring a frame down here. You can hang it from the ceiling. Chico still hasn't fixed that fucking electrical. Oh, excuse my language. That Chico. So anyhow, we are on to the painting. And part of the painting is the hubs and side covers. And since it's just freezing cold out there for me to wash the frame and start on it, I'm going to go ahead in the meantime and paint some of these. So now the process that I've come to is I start out with a self-etching primer, even on that aluminum. I don't know if it's needed, but I do it anyway. Summit's got it for $33, by the way. That's not cheap, is it? Then I go back and forth between the Dupa Color Silver or the Honda Cloud Silver, which you can get like at Tractor Supply and some other places. And I don't know, they're so similar that I'm on this one I'm going to use the Honda uh, Cloud Silver. And then uh, the, the Clear is what I use over the Dupla color engine. I'm going to see how the cloud silver looks. I don't believe I need to clear the cloud silver. So let's go ahead and get these primed up and get them silver. I primed just enough to cover. I don't like a lot of buildup on the wheels or anything like this because it just flakes off if it's too thick. So just enough to cover. And this is what it looks like after it's been bead blasted and cleaned. So I'm gonna put the primer on this and the silver on that. Now this is after two light coats and I'm gonna do like three or four. Just light, light, light misting. And then here is the primer on the side case and now that SEM dries in 10, 20 minutes. Self-etching primer dries 10, 20 minutes. All the other stuff I've looked at has been like overnight, and I don't like that. So let's keep going on the silver. So this is after four coats, and what I do is I keep spinning the wheel. I'll hook it on this hole here, then I'll take another one and I'll hook it on that. So I'm getting it a little more even all the way around. And you can see it shining. So that's all I want to do is just get to a shine. I don't want it super thick. I don't want it really. I've had problems when I put it on real thick with a lot of clear when you bolt down and you put a nut like in a side cover it it cracks around the hole where the the bolt goes so there's that and there's quite a difference between that and then one the first light coat on the side cover 
you can see there's just not any shine yet, but that's a good tack coat. It's gonna look beautiful. So let's get this one silver. And there's Cloud Silver. And it's really wet. So let's let those dry. And we'll see what next there is to paint before it warms up and I can actually get out and clean up that frame. And I've got this hub all ready to go into the sandblaster. As you can see, I've got blue electrical tape and that helps keep the medium, all that sand from going down into the, into the center there. Just makes it for easier cleaning, but it also, the, the rubber tape bounces off the, the glass bead just bounces off of it, doesn't peel it away. So got to get all that cleaned up. Then I moved on to this. I cleaned all the oil. I've got it all. I, I washed the exterior, but the interior, you know, it's got oil and grease. And so I just came up with this idea. Let's see how it works. I think this is gonna work. Get all that grease out of there and then tape it up and beat. And a little bit more sandblasting. Got these real nice and clean. I'm gonna pull off the blue tape and then I'll just sand where I didn't get it with the uh, sandblaster. And then I've got a special wheel that I use to get that last little bit of corrosion out of that break. And I've got the pegs apart. And now we're ready. Before I go there, I'm going to show you the little wheel. It's a kind of like a ceramic wheel. And I learned about that on uh, brake you know, brake cylinders, you know, front and rear discs, the big round cylinders, they get corroded inside and these little wheels will just polish the metal so that your brake piston will travel back and forth again. So we're gonna go from this And do a little cleaning and we'll end up with to that with the wash bay no more beehives and wasp nests and that sort of thing so from here we're going to start to work on the rust areas and get this honda emblem off and get it ready for its first coat of primer i'm taking a two stage attack at this rust. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm gonna hit it with Loctite Rust Neutralizer. Any of those sprays will do. I'm just, basically I'm hitting this light rust here up to about here. This I'm gonna use to pour. This stuff is awesome for really rusted out parts. So. But inside, you know, the light rust, I'm just gonna hit it with the spray and do the two coats it calls for. And then I'll just overspray a little red in there and it's gonna look great. And so there's the pour. I've got it in the, uh, in the cracks. You know, it's gonna just seal and kind of work like, you know, a body seam sealer, but it's gonna stop the rust completely. You know, and you've got all in here. And like I said, after I'm done, look at that splooging out. And underneath here. So when I'm done with that, and it's dry, it dries to a rock hard, shiny uh, cover. So uh, it's almost primer color, so I'll just 
fog in primer and uh, the other surface rust will be taken care of with the spray stuff and when that turns black then I'll hit it again so it's a little process of just you know precautionary uh, I, I could have painted it and it would have been years before you'd have seen anything I mean it's not even bubbling on the old paint so now we'll let that cure up we'll get the uh, emblems off and get it sanded down and get it flat for its first coat of primer and there they are upstairs all dry and nice and i'm waiting for the frame to dry and funny things happen when you're waiting for things to dry so i could not get this rim the tire will not come off the rim so what i did is i cut both sides look at that look at that I have no idea how I'm going to get that tire off of there. I mean, it's welded on. All right, so we're buzzing down the Honda emblems, and we're going to clean up any areas on it that are rough, like right up in here, and some of this rust we're going to get down to metal. We got the inside all painted and rust preventative. I'll buzz off the little drips here and down here there's actually some holes I'm gonna fill with body filler and it's this uh, pour the silver pour paint actually added a lot of structure to it so let's get on with cleaning up the frame by the way this is what I use it's a scotch bright pad and you can and that's it. Just takes it right down. And we got all the all the emblems off. And I went ahead and just spotted every little spot of rust that the wheel would get just to save me some time and I don't want it to bubble back up you know that was pretty deep and I'll be able to probably the the miracle primer will probably take care of everything else I mean there's no dents there's just no dents in this thing so we'll get this glue off of here and I think I'm just gonna go right to primer with it so before I go to primer, the top race, the bottom race in this is good. The top race is, it would have worked, but it was kind of questionable. So what I've got is a hammer and a nice little brass. And to be honest, I've already popped it out, but you just uh, kind of hold it against it. Against the race down, in the, down here, there's, you know, the lip of the race. And there it comes out. I didn't have to give it much in the way of a hammer, though. It came right out. And I think the smaller they are, the easier they are to get out. So you can see that's a little discolored, where this is nice and shiny. So I'm going to replace it. It was, it was not too much. All right, I flipped it over. Now I'm going to clean it up a little bit, just to make sure that there's no... pieces of dirt or anything in there. You can see it's actually pretty clean. There's no oil or grease in it. But I get it nice and shiny and a brand new Honda. Rocky Mountain's awesome. They're all awesome, but Rocky Mountain gets it to me in a day. I told Peter about them and hopefully Peter starts using them because, you know, they have a lot of OEM Honda parts. So I'm just going to kind of tap it. You can see it's... That's as far as I can get it. 
from here, but it's not bottomed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can get a socket that's going to fit inside, not on the race, not on the pressing area where the ball bearings are, but right here. Uh, I don't think I can catch the lip of this small race. Let's see what I've got. I found a socket that might just hit on it perfect. I, I thought about it. This is thin right here. And I don't want to uh, disform this. I want it to be perfect. So I'm going to see if I can get it in with this. Oh, yeah. I'm going to get down there a little bit, but it's not quite. Yeah, it is. You know, something tells me that's bottomed. That's well, gone in a little bit. Well, let's just see. Let's keep. And I'm looking at it, and I've got about a quarter of an inch to go around there. Never really used this until today. Yeah, let's see. Let's see how much more we got to go. You know, I don't know if that I, that. To me, that might just be bottomed, but I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a little bit more with a different socket. All right, so I got it as far as I could with the socket. Then I took the old race and I just turned it upside down, and I kept tapping it in, you know, fairly hard to get it to move. And it's now when I look at it with the uh, it's it's bottomed all the way around. That's where we want it. I chased all the holes and there was a broken off stud in here I drilled out and then re-threaded. So I've got all the threads. You can see how shiny they get in there. And I'm going to do that um, again after this thing's painted, probably. Depends. If they go in nice and smooth, then no big deal. So now I've got, you know, like the surface area that the brake rides on. I got that taped off. I've got the front VIN number and the races taped off. So now I'm going to just, I'm going to sand where it's shiny on the paint and get it ready. And then I'm going to move on to prepping the swing arm the front forks and anything else that's going to be painted red. All right, we're down in the paint booth. We've got this frame is ready. And these forks are ready. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit them with self-etching primer. And hopefully I've got enough. <laughs> and then we're going to build it up with some high build primer. All right, I had enough to cover the raw metal, the bare metal, and get it kind of one color, but really, it's all about just covering the metal <clears throat> that I exposed when I bead blasted. So there is the self-etching primer. And there we are in primer. And as you can see, I'm probably not gonna have to do a whole lot of work to this. It's looking pretty good. I'll put a guide coat on it. Where I'm gonna have an issue is right here. That plastic is kind of aged. So I'm gonna probably I'm probably, I'm going to hit it as much as I can with the primer and build it up. But I think I'm just going to have to skin it with some body. But then again, I'm going to get down to the plastic. So I'm just going to have to work on that. That's a work in progress. In between coats, I do sit out here with the parts manager. And we play a little bit of pool. I just shoot some balls. But look what this guy does.
and now the guide coat. And I'm just going to mist it over the area I'm going to work because I'm not, I'm not going to do body work on most of this frame. It's just, just that. It's just frame. There's kind of a line right here. I think above that would be considered body work. But then you've got the top cap here. So, just a little where I want it to be fairly flat. Let that dry and overnight and we'll start our first sanding. This is where I'm going to cut this segment and <clears throat> try to keep them shorter. But here is everything out of the paint booth and ready for a initial sanding. Now you can see I can already see how this high build primer might just do everything I need without any filling. I'd hate to fill plastic. I don't know. So, maybe with this guide coat, I'll probably have to sand this. And then I might have to do three coats of primer. You know, three, not coats, but three applications of maybe three, four, five coats to finally get the primer to build up enough to take out these uh, sun blemishes, you might say. And that's, that's probably going to be the easiest way to do it. So we're going to end this video. And uh, I guess two ton Tom in, where is it? Two ton Tom is is there in Shingletown and I think what I need is I need two ton Tom to come over here and try and break the beads on these wheels if he could sit on them if two ton Tom could come sit on these I might be able to break the beads but I've tried everything I've even cut the tire and the more I looked at these, even two-ton Tom couldn't make these beads give up. But I didn't really, once I cut these open, I really didn't like the fact that half the metal's gone. I mean, you're not seeing half the metal. It's all on the floor. And so these are, would probably work. I mean, I've... I would be able to get them smooth enough because they're inside. They just need to, you know, kind of keep from rusting anymore. And I could straighten them and sand them and paint them and everything. And that would be okay. But I found some brand new uh, reproductions on eBay. And they're coming and they're $49 for both rims. So there's, uh, maybe it's $49 per rim. Uh, but it's both sides. So I think for a hundred and six bucks, I've got two new, you know, brand new front and rear rims. And those are going to be much easier to work with. So on the next video, we're going to get into the painting. And also a little bit of repair on the pegs and a few other things. And, uh, really start putting it back together. So until then, we'll see you on the next video. Welcome back to the channel. We are working on the CT70, the Honda Mini Trail. Like I showed you before, we got everything all broken apart and we moved on to our plating.